How's everybody doing today? Stefano here and what I'm going to show you today is one method that I use to get 2700 millimeters out of my Sony a7 III Sigma MC11 adapter and my Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary lens. So later on I'm going to talk a bit about why I do this. I don't always do it, there's certain times when I'll actually use this technique, but I'll just get right into it and I'll show you exactly what I do to get this. So first off what you want to do is you want to set your camera into 4K, I'm going to use 24 frames per second for this one. So once you have your camera set to 4K what you're going to want to do is go into your second tab and go to the fifth page and make sure that you have clear image zoom on and another thing that i did is just to make this a little bit more simple is under my custom keys i set custom button three put it to my aps-c super 35 crop mode and custom button number four is for the zoom mode so custom three is up here custom four is down here so right now i'm going to start filming uh, with no crops on whatsoever 4k 24 frames per second Now, remember custom button number three is what I used as the Super 35 mode. So what that does is it adds a 1.5 times crop factor to your image with little to no loss of image quality. So from what I've seen, I haven't really noticed much of a difference using both modes. So here's the difference. I'll just show you before I start recording. So on here, it's quite a, quite a leap. So now that we have that down, we're gonna go into the next mode, which is the clear view zoom. So you can zoom anywhere between uh, 1.1 times to 1.5 times for additional reach, and that'll bring you up to 1,350 millimeters. And now, since you've been recording in 4K, when you bring it into your 1080p timeline, the 4K image is double the size of a 1080p image. So if you decide not to scale it down, what you're actually gonna get is basically a 2X crop factor. So that brings you to 2700 millimeters. This is the image. I don't think it looks that bad. It actually looks pretty good. So I wouldn't always use this method, I mean it's good to have in your back pocket but it could get excessive especially when you're out at that 2700 millimeter mark. The quality is a little bit degraded so I would only use this if you really have to. Using the Super 35 mode is incredible especially when you're in 4K and you're bringing it into a 1080p timeline there's almost like no loss of quality and the times where I actually like to use this in the field is for one when there's a sensitive species so if I'm filming something like an owl you know you don't want to get that close to an owl when I was in Central America I had a forest falcon pop out of a trail next to me and I wasn't able to move because he, he was on to me he saw me but what I was able to do was just use this mode to get three different shots so I was able to get a wide shot a mid shot and a tight shot without moving so that's extremely extremely useful especially when birds are really flighty and they're on to you and you don't want to make a lot of ruckus to try to get closer and closer. And the second time I like to use it is during behavioral shots. So that could be when an animal's feeding or when an animal's nesting. You don't want to interrupt it when it's doing anything natural. So 
uh, if it's a behavioral shot and you're like, oh, I wish I could get a little bit closer, at least this way, you know, you can get the shot from where you're standing and you don't have to worry too much about chasing an animal off or interrupting it during a meal or while it's feeding its babies or sitting on eggs. So those are the two times where I really enjoy using something like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on a little technique that I like to use to get a little bit more reach out of my camera. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.